What's good y'all, Master Yoshi here. I'm about to show you the quick and easy way of how to flush and change your brake fluid and how to bleed your brake lines. Drop the beat. What's good y'all, I'm about to show y'all this procedure on my 2009 Honda CBR 600RR but the procedure is pretty standard for most motorcycles. So if y'all know me, you know your boy is cheap so I'm using this nice little Mighty Vac from Harbor Freight. Just using some shop towels and paper towels, an old t-shirt, some rubber gloves, a 90 degree Phillips screwdriver, and an 8mm wrench. And most importantly, you can't do no work in the garage without no burr. Got me that Mission Lobe Ultra. Cause I'm trying to watch my figure. All right, y'all, so I'm about to start this thing off in the back. We're gonna start with the rear brake and the rear brake reservoir. So this is when you need your angled screwdriver if you have uh, this model of bike. And this is to help you get them screws out. So as I start removing the cap and bladder, I like to clean up some of the debris that's already there. I do this on the cap and then I also do it on the reservoir itself. Right here, I'm poking two different holes in this foil. That way, when I pour the brake fluid, it's a lot more controlled and, uh, and easier to clean up your messes. Now, as you can see, I got some paper towels stuffed up around here. That's because brake fluid, it don't like any type of finished product. It can start really messing up your finish. So you want to be very careful not to spill any of this stuff. And if you do spill it, you want to clean it up as quickly as you can. Right here, you see me filling up my reservoir, making sure it's full. But in hindsight, I probably should have sucked some of this old fluid out first. But I topped it off because of the next step, I'm going to go to my bleeder valve and I'm going to start pulling some of this fluid through. So right here, just remove the little dust cap off your bleeder valve. And then depending on what side of the wrench you want to use, go ahead and put your wrench on and then hook up your hoses. So the instructions on the Mighty Back said to pump it up about 10 to 15 times. And you can see here what the pressure is on the gauge. So I pump it up 10 to 15 times and then I, I crack open the bleeder valve to start pulling some of the fluid through. So this was worrying me at first because it looks like there's a whole bunch of air, but I believe this is just because of how these different fittings fit onto my bleeder valve. So now you can just keep pumping your Mighty Vac, making sure that you keep that pressure up so you can keep pulling fluid through and then also make sure that you're not emptying your reservoir so you're not introducing any air into your system. In the reservoir that's attached to my little Mighty Vac, you can see how dirty the fluid is. So I just keep pulling this fluid through until the fluid starts becoming clear. After the fluid turns clear and I can tell that I flushed all the old brake fluid out, I'm going to start using the old school method of bleeding these brakes. So when you bleed your brakes the old school method, you no longer need to use a vacuum. So now we'll be using the pressure from the brake system to push the fluid out, as opposed to using the pressure from the vacuum to suck the fluid out. So you can see I run my hose straight from the bleeder valve into my catch container. Now I could have left it attached to my pump reservoir, but I figured it's all going in the same place anyways. So technically, you don't need a vacuum to flush nor bleed your brakes, but I used it to help flush it so that it'd be a faster process. So to do that, what you do is you close your bleeder valve, you pump your brake rapidly a few times, hold the brake down, crack open the bleeder valve, let your brake decompress all the way, See some of the fluid come out, close your bleeder valve back up, and release the brake. Repeat this step multiple times until you see no more air bubbles. When you press on the brake and open your bleeder valve, you'll notice that the brake falls all the way through. This is fine. Do not release the brake until after you close the valve back up. Alright y'all, we're done with the rear brake and as you can see in that little container, the fluid in there is pretty clear. So we flushed out all the old fluid, we even pulled through some new fluid to make sure. We've bled the brake and I'm just going to make sure the reservoir is at a good level. Alright y'all, when it comes to bleeding your front brake system, I've seen two different schools of thought. The manual I have says start at the bleeder valve nearest your reservoir, then go on to the right caliper and then do the left caliper. So basically start from the closest and end from the furthest. Now I've seen the exact opposite where people recommend that you start from the furthest and finish up with the bleeder valve nearest your reservoir. So which one's best, I do not know. I'm just gonna follow what I saw in my manual. You can see this time I realized that, yeah, maybe I should just pull some of this old fluid out first. But again, I'm not gonna empty out my reservoir. All right, y'all, so I'm not gonna waste your time by showing you all three valves being bled. I'm sure you got the picture from when I did the rear brake. So basically, 
follow the same method. Just get all the air out the system and get your brakes nice and right. Thank y'all for tuning in. I don't got nothing else for y'all, man. Y'all stay blessed. Don't be too stressed. Master Yoshio. Peace. <laughs>